Good afternoon. Um, I'm Wendy Robertson. I'm the Digital Infrastructure and Smart City Lead for Aberdeen City Council, responsible for the programme management of the City Region deal. The topics we'll go over today is the deal and the heads of term, the governance, the finance and the projects and the approach to procurement and upcoming procurements. The deal is the agreement between the UK Government and the Scottish Government with Aberdeen City Council, Aberdeenshire Council and Opportunity North East on a city region deal. It follows the signing of a heads of term agreement in 2016 by the Secretary of State for Scotland, the Cabinet Secretary for Infrastructure, Investment and Cities, the leader of Aberdeen City Council and one of the co-leaders of Aberdeenshire Council and the chair of one. The deal is to run for 10 years, so we're quite mature in terms of the city deals and city growth um, across the, the country. We have a set governance structure. We have at the top the Scottish City Region and Growth Deal Delivery Board. Then we have our City Region Deal Joint Committee and then our Programme Board. And then our PMO manages each of the different infrastructure stands. We've got digital, innovation, transport and housing. I'll go into these in more detail when we're discussing the projects. In terms of the finances, um, we have over 250 million invested in the Aberdeen City Region deal. The deal has grown from an investment of 826 million to 1.013 billion, primarily due to an increase in private sector contributions for the innovation and digital theme projects. The funding that has been secured by the projects are committed post-March 2026. As you can see, they're split into innovation theme, the digital theme and the transport theme, with contributions from the UK government, the Scottish government, the two councils and our regional partners, given a total of 1.013 billion investment. I'll first go through the innovation projects. The first one is the Net Zero Technology Centre. NZTC develops and deploys technologies that reduce emissions, unlocks the full potential of an integrated energy system, and propel the energy industry towards a digital, automated, and decarbonised future. The centre does this by co-investing with industry to fund and develop technology projects, working in partnership with pioneering technology developers, supporting clean energy startups through their annual TechX Accelerator program and collaborating with partners across the world. Through its newly launched Net Zero Technology Services business, they also provide clients with insights and foresights on current and emerging technologies, helping them navigate and accelerate their journey to Net Zero and to make the right technology investment decisions. The GVA potential is between 15 billion to 20 billion. New technologies deployed on a first user principle, 64 at present. The NZTC Solution Centre is funded technologies reaching commercialised phase, more than 30. The number of supply chain technology accelerated projects co-funded is 57. There's more than 1,400 enabled and safeguarded jobs in the energy sector, all paying at least the real living wage. NZTC has provided grants to 215 businesses to invest in technology, research and development for a low carbon energy future. The next innovation project is the One Bio Hub. This is an industry innovation hub. It's a 10 year, 40 million investment project to accelerate life sciences growth and build on the strengths of the sector cluster in the Northeast, which includes the company base, the University of Aberdeen, Robert Gordon University and the NHS. The project, led by Opportunity Northeast, completed the second half of its main construction phase early this year and had its formal launch in May 2023 and opening in late summer 2023. The procurement route, the construction contract, was procured through Public Sco um, Contract Scotland. The next innovation project is One Seed Pod. This is a 27 million investment in the food and drink industry to create an innovation hub for manufacturing and production in the North East Scotland that will deliver regional and national growth ambitions. Led by Opportunity North East, the Aberdeen City Region Deal Industry Innovation Project will put the region's businesses at the forefront of innovation, productivity, sustainability and developing foods of the future to increase high value exports and create new jobs. The project completed critical business case capital funding, design and procurement phases during the year, enabling the appointment of a main contractor to which began construction on site in April this year. 
the number of startups participating in the accelerator program is 39. The number of startups achieved by year five is four. The companies investing in R&D, target three. Um, the workshop, the business growth programs, two. Developing and de delivering startup accelerator programs, two is the target. And developing and delivering the mentor, mentoring program, 219 to present. The procurement route was the construction was procured through Public Contract Scotland. As I said, we're quite a mature deal. Therefore, a lot of the projects have been completed or are in the delivery pro process. However, coming up over the next um, few months, there will be other opportunities um, for procurement. The next innovation project is the Aberdeen South Harbour. This will ultimately add 1,400 metres in quayside length with the ability to accommodate vessels up to 300 metres in length. As the final construction completion approaches, a phased handover of the key sites from construction teams to marine operations has taken place since July 2022. The new facilities are creating new opportunities for energy transition activities, including renewables and decommissioning, attracting new cargo to the port and generating increased tourism through cruise traffic around the northeast. The Port of Aberdeen announced that Her Royal Highness the Princess Royal will officially open the new harbour on Friday the 22nd of September. Next section will go on to the digital projects. This is my area of expertise. The first project we'll go on to is the full fibre infrastructure project. This was designed as a public sector anchor tenancy model, meaning that by connecting public sector sites through an approved framework, it could stimulate a commercial investment into the city and the region to roll out fibre to the premises to homes that may not have been commercially viable um, to oper operators previously. And this would be to homes and premises and um, businesses also. This was delivered in partnership with NEOS Networks, Aberdeenshire Council, Aberdeen City Council and NH Grampian under the Aberdeen City Region deal and this connected up 193 sites across the region. The project represented a major investment and commitment to bring full fibre connectivity to the region in order to boost economic activity and the quality of life as well as improving the delivery of public services. All sites within the original contract have been connected and transitioned to the corporate network and a further five additional sites um, will be added. The last milestone was the final site was connected and is now operational, therefore the construction has completed. Um, the full fibre, dark fibre network stretch, um, stretches for some 275 kilometres across the region and linking six major locations, Aberdeen, West Hill, Stonehaven, Bankery, Inverurie and Ellen, as well as the smaller communities between them. I'll speak a little bit more about the next phase of the project um, further on. The benefits of this project um, in terms of procurement was this was the first procurement that we'd undertaken that we specifically put in community benefits to the procurement tender um, and scored um, the, um, those tendering on that basis. This project delivered three construction jobs and seven apprenticeships, all paying at least the real living wage via the community benefits clauses within the contract five school engagement sessions, invigorating future workforce by running workshops and employability in STEM, five activities for higher education students, two placements and three STEM guest lectures, upskilling the workforce, funding um, provided to upskill project staff um, with BT PIA accreditations, which is a, a technical term in terms of digital. Supporting other sectors, um, there was two donations that have been made to charities, um, Absafe and the other to four pillars. In terms of procurement, we used a multi-supplier framework that was put in place, the first of its kind, to allow a call off from five successful operators that um, came onto the, the um, framework um, following specific terms and conditions. This would mean that those on the framework, um, Aberdeen City Council, Shire Council, NHS Grampian, Dundee City Council, Perth and Kinross Council and Angus Council and Tayside could procure off this framework, um, which makes it more streamlined um, and more competitive. In terms of um, social value, the, we won the social value award um, from the Go Awards um, in terms of the full fibre project. The award specifically recognised innovation and ambitious approaches to community benefits and social value devised by commercial and procurement services. The project is a collaborative partnership between um, those I mentioned previously 
Conscious explicit links were made between community benefit outcomes sought in the project and relevant national and local socio-economic priorities such as inclusive economic growth, digital inclusion, employability and skills and community to support. The commercial and procurement shared services approach to community benefits are designed to maximise social value impacts across the three pillars, social, economic and environmental of sustainable procurement for the benefit of citizens and communities directly affected by the project. As accountable public authorities, the overarching objective was to secure creative and ambitious social value outcomes proportionate to the level of spend, nature and length of the contract. The approach recognises the unique professional competencies and ethical drivers of prospective suppliers and seeks to harness supplier creativity in furtherance of this objective. As I mentioned, the construction part of the project is over. However, what we want to encourage, and we are working together with NEOS to do this, is to commercialize their network to enable local suppliers, national suppliers, um, to, I, I, I'm not sure how the process would work, but they would lease space within their infrastructure to deliver services to homes, businesses, residents across the region. Um, we would hope that this would drive um, commerciality and um, competitiveness across the region. So in terms of engaging, I presume NEOS will go out to different um, local authorities, reach out to procurement services to then advertise um, nationally as to how um, we can deliver these services. The next project is the City Network Extension Project. Now this um, was completed in um, November 2021 and this was the first city region deal project to be completed. The project has successfully stimulated private sector investment of up to 59, 59 million in the city by City Fibre and Vodafone, building on the council's fibre network. City Fibre utilised to extend and deploy approximately 800 kilometres of fibre within Aberdeen City, providing the majority of the city with access to fibre to the pre premises at gigabit speeds. City Fibre's fibre to the premises transformation project was building momentum until relatively recently, most businesses and homes were connected through copper wires, which was slow and unreliable. FTTP gives the resilience and higher capacity speeds um, for digital connectivity and speeds are great, greatly improved. Um, in turn helping improve businesses, more of those people working from home, studying from home. Um, this gives light to more of a, a conducive way of working. The work also helped to enable Aberdeen to become a fully smart city. This is a success story for the deal. The original private sector investment was 15 million. However, they've secured investment of 59 million. Increased availability of fiber to the premises um, in Aberdeen city region. Um, the timing additionality, securing a level of investment sooner than would otherwise occur. Um, securing a level of coverage, the scale additionality and future rollout on a scale that would not occur without this project happening. It really included the investment to a city that perhaps commercially they wouldn't have invested in. However, this anchor tenancy model has really boosted things for the city. The project connected 57 corporate sites to fibre connectivity and the procurement was undertaken through the Swan and Capita contract who then contract, subcontracted City Fibre to undertake the work across the city. We also have a duct network extension project. Now, the ducts are fed across the city for traffic management purposes to feed fibre connectivity through them to connect our traffic management system. Initially, this duct network um, is for local authorities' strategic transport needs, followed by engagement with the commercial organisations to encourage them to utilise the expanded network to enhance their fibre offer offering in Aberdeen City. What this means in a nutshell is we have commercialised our Aberdeen city, ducting across the city, 25 kilometres and a further 17. Now this is for the strategic tra transport routes um, to connect our um, transport systems to, to connectivity. However, it will enable competition. Perhaps local operators can lease space in our ducts that perhaps they couldn't afford the capital outlay of digging their own infrastructure, which will enable competition and more um, benefits for, for um, I suppose, more opportunities um, for delivery of 
connectivity across the city, and also to future-proof for autonomous vehicles and 5G and other technologies as to when the time comes. Technology is moving at such a pace, we can't then envisage what will happen over the next few years, but we can future-proof um, by ensuring that the infrastructure is there to be utilised and maximised when the time comes. The benefits are we have two communication providers already um, in our duct network um, providing services across the city. Um, there's 38 transport systems connected along this duct network route. Um, there's 25 kilometres past enabling effective duct network infrastructure. Um, phase one was completed, phase two has one section just to complete um, this month and phase three um, is currently underway due to be completed by the end of 2024. This will give us a comprehensive network across the city that can be utilised, like we said, not just for fibre network providers but also for local companies but for other technology providers when the time comes. Phase one was procured through PCS, I believe, in phase two and three are being delivered by our ACC roads team. We have procurements that will be coming up within the next few months. We are focusing on 5G at present, um, with the city region deal invested in three new 5G projects. First of all is the Port of Aberdeen. This project will provide investment to the Port of Aberdeen to procure a private 5G infrastructure in the new Aberdeen South Port to increase productivity and reduce operational costs, making Aberdeen compatible with leading parts across the world, ports across the world. Initial discussions with Peterhead Port on their ambitions for 5G are in progress, with the opportunity to explore 5G provision and the future learning from the rollout of 5G at the Port of Aberdeen. The benefits for the port would be reduced capital investment in the establishment of the South Harbour, increased flexibility in operation as equipment and cameras can be rapidly relocated, the ability to monitor and transmit operational data in real time, and enhanced health and safety, enhanced port security, cost saving through automation of machinery and remote operation and management, a dedicated IoT connectivity to support data to and from cranes, vehicles and staff and smart devices and more. So although the city region deal um, is investing in this project, it will be the port that will be undertaking the procurement of the 5G network. Um, we will also put up details of when procurements will be coming up on the Aberdeen city region deal website, which is ABZ deal. So just keep an eye on that for anything coming up. The next project is the One 5G pop-up network. This will fund a mobile pop-up network to the region. 5G network to enable companies to test applications in a real-life environment. A test bed for 5G has been established in Aberdeen to help businesses explore the potential applications of next generation mobile connectivity. The Scotland 5G Centre and Opportunity North East um, have a, a base here at one code base and they are collaborating to drive the adoption of 5G in key sectors of the economy, including energy, utilities, food and drink, tourism, ports and logistics. We hope the 1G pop-up network will raise awareness of 5G potential in local communities and business sectors to be able to test the applications in the field. This will provide proof of concept and act as a stepping stone to scale commercial deployment. Development of a centre of excellence for Scotland and to demonstrate um, a commercial model to be replicated across Scotland. One will procure the 5G pop-up network infrastructure. We will obviously invest in them and they will undertake the procurement. The final one is the Huntley 5G project, which will provide investment in 5G infrastructure to the Scottish Agricultural Organisational Society, SEOS, to facilitate the delivery of industry-leading agri-tech applications and services and environmental monitoring in rural Aberdeenshire using Huntley as an initial area. This will, the benefits will be improved environmental monitoring, enhanced livestock tracking, improved land management, development of a centre of excellence for Scotland and the demonstration of a commercial model to be replicated across Scotland. SEOS will procure the 5G infrastructure the procurement of a project from a systems integrator alongside connectivity providers. This partner will lead and deliver on mobile infrastructure, fixed infrastructure, a data platform, and long-term commercialization and scaling, um, which sales will lead on the use case development. What we would envisage from this and from the procurement 
um, would be the connectivity, the private 5G network for use um, by SEOS, a public 5G network and the dark fiber behind it. Um, mandatory use cases would be for environmental monitoring and control for agriculture, including tracking, health, etc. Then we would have optional use cases to do with transport, public service del delivery and tourism. What we would envisage would be there would be the digital place of Huntley that would have sales as the anchor tenant as such. This would be the applications for their um, agri-tech side of things. However, the, we would hope that the, the systems integrator would look wider than that, perhaps um, looking at telecare, telehealth, transport, mobility, a mobility hub there for transport, but also perhaps an immersive 5G experience. Um, I've talked <laughs> for too long, apologies, I never got through all the sides, it just tends to happen um, this way. In conclusion, what I would say would be that although we are a mature deal, um, growth deal, there are procurement opportunities coming up um, and we would encourage yourselves to you know, partner with maybe larger um, operators, but the opportunities are there and specifically community benefits are looked at um, very favourably and we'll be into most procurements now. Um, I think we'll, we can leave it there. Um, I will be around at the, I think Fiona, what's the stall up, up at the top? Just up at the top there. Um, for, if there's any questions, please come along. Thank you.